Last summer, some Southern Floridians were pondering the possible release of a transgenic mosquito that might slow the spread of the Zika virus. Sam Glucksman, a plant doctor at Hundley Farms, was less concerned about a genetically modified bug than the corn silk flies invading the company's sweet corn fields. Not many people were talking about it. Um, again, probably has a lot more to do with the fact that we don't have a lot of Zika cases here in Palm Beach County, or at least where I am. Um, I would say down south is probably, they're probably talking about it a lot more. Residents of the Florida Keys, where release of the newly engineered bug is still pending, did talk about it. Some protesting and others advocating for slowing the spread of the potentially debilitating virus. The genetically engineered mosquito joins an altered diamondback moth in New York State in having been given the federal government's green light in terms of no significant environmental impact related to pending open field trials. Several decades of lab work have set in motion the potential for genetically altered bugs that some say may reduce the use of pesticides while protecting human health. The mosquito species that carries malaria in Africa is anticipated to be an early target. In the case of insects of human health concern, uh, there's, there's uh, a strong argument to be made that eliminating those insects locally or, or perhaps even globally uh, might, actually, uh, might actually be a good thing. Some, however, are leery of being quite so aggressive in altering a species population. These mosquitoes have a role in the ecosystems in which they live. Uh, in the case of Anopheles gambi in Africa, this is their natural environment. We're not talking about wiping out uh, all 3,000 species of mosquito that exist in the world. We're, uh, it's a technology that would be specifically targeted in the case of Africa to the, the human malaria transmitting mosquito, Anopheles gambi. Regardless, Obrachta and Glucksman believe the public needs to be better informed. Most average people really don't know the facts and the science behind it. I think the biggest misconceptions are that these animals are going to get loose and somehow mate with native indigenous species and create some crazy mutant that's going to be resistant to everything and is going to eat your children while you sleep. And people are just so scared and they don't need to be so scared. The engineered mosquito, developed by the Britain-based company Oxitec, contains a self-destruct mechanism created by inserting a gene into the bug's DNA. The gene causes the mosquito's offspring to die before reaching adulthood. Other nations have released Oxitec's mosquitoes in early tests aimed at reducing illness and death from mosquito-borne disease. Besides potentially benefiting human health, proponents also see the possibility of using genetically engineered bugs to reduce insecticide use. If it works, Great, we don't have to introduce possible poisons or toxins to the environment and kill off, you know, non-target animals. That would be the pro. The con would be what's saying that those mosquitoes are going to stay here. It's just like any other biological control. I mean, you can release them, but as soon as you do, they're free to go wherever they want. It doesn't mean they're going to stay here and take care of your problem. They might go next door and take care of that guy's problem. As with the decades-old radiation sterilization programs that nearly wiped out several problematic insects, entomologists like Obracta say the releases would need to be coordinated over a large geographic area. Oxitec is also involved with Cornell University's pending field trials in upstate New York, where genetically engineered diamondback moths would be released in a 10-acre area. Female offspring die before reproducing. Diamondback moths, which quickly develop resistance to insecticides, cause an estimated $4 billion in damage worldwide annually to food crops like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower. In the plant crop world, it's a huge catch-22 because people complain that we use too many chemicals, and, um, but yet you don't want a single spot on your tomato, and you want that tomato to be nice and juicy, but you don't want any bruises on it. And it can't have any pesticides on it whatsoever. It has to be totally clean and perfect and the right color. It can't be kind of green. It has to be all red. You know, at the same time, the only way to do that is to use the very things that you are telling us that you don't want us to use. 
Obracta says that gene drive, a powerful tool that has yet to be tested outside the laboratory, allows an individual bug's genetic code to be passed to nearly all of its offspring. By engineering all the insects to be male, for example, scientists could wipe out a species in an area. Gene drive, which can occasionally occur in nature, could help reduce human health threats or push out invasive species from an area. Non-native insects and pathogens cost an estimated $40 billion annually in the United States alone. This is not to say that the scientific community has not considered the pitfalls to the process. There's been a lot of discussion about applying these types of technologies uh, for the purposes of controlling, say, invasive species of all types, not just insects, but fish, plants, and so on. The environmental impact can't be dismissed and needs to be investigated for each of these situations where people are planning to try to eradicate a species from an environment. According to Obracta, those who research gene drive's potential are also looking for a way to turn off any modifications should something go wrong. They will also consider potential impact on other species should one disappear. Companies like Oxitec have been waiting for federal or local approval before releasing their genetically altered bugs. It remains to be seen how the rest of the country will view the potential risks and rewards of this new approach for battling pests. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.